Welcome to RGTV. I'm here today with Alicia Trepka. Uh, yes, hi. Um, so I've uh, recently graduated um, from a communication design course. Um, my designation was photography. So I come from photography background. And I actually, I've only spent two years at the university, not four, because I um, started from third year uh through the degree rank, degree link with um nesco of curiosity what did you find is the main differences between doing photography at nesco and doing the wider course of communication design at Grace? um the difference was um it was a, it was a big adjustment at first because uh, at the college they really focus on on how you do things, so technical side of things, you know, the lighting, the editing, the um, exposure, focus, everything. And so you focus on the, um, the how and the what, uh, whereas in the, you, you come to university, they just tell you like to constantly think about why you're doing things. So you have to have this like mass message behind your work. So that was a big adjustment. It was hard at first, like especially that you, you know, you don't really start with everyone else from first year, and you just like thrown into this, like in the middle of all this uh, um, work, and you have to figure it out. So. Do you want to tell me about your choice of music and the color scheme and the layout that you've chosen for your for your room? Yes, so we've been provided with some templates for the rooms. Um, so I picked the the room that was quite simple and, you know, you just enter the room and you see pretty much everything. I don't want to, there was one with like, um, it was kind of like a um, place you could turn and I, I find that it's really difficult to navigate when you when you view the room, especially when you on your phone. Like, uh, you know, a lot of people like not used to virtual spaces, so I just picked like a simple one. Um, and then I decided I didn't want to like the standard white cube because um, I, I maybe it's just my personal choice. I don't like I'm not a fan of like bright lights. I prefer dim lights. And also I, I picked, um, so I changed the um, colors of the walls to gray, um, just maybe because we are in a gray city, I don't know. I haven't thought about it as much. And it was quite neutral as well. And I thought that uh, the pictures would stand out better if you if you have them like, like a dimmed light. And then I picked the, uh, I added a few lights. Uh, so each of the pictures have like uh, a light spotlight directed directly at them. Um, and the music, I, I thought um, that would maybe like add a mood to it, like uh, some like melancholic music and just, you know. Do you want to give us more inf information on why you chose this topic? Well, the topic is, it's very now, because, you know, wherever you turn, everyone's talking about it. And this, this is an issue. Actually, I, when I was like, thinking and reflecting like where I first encountered the issue. I was, um, it was a long time ago. You don't need to know how long ago I was in primary school. And we, um, it was an Earth Day and we went, our school um, took us to clean the forest. So the amount of stuff that we found there, and it was, mind you, it was um, several years ago. So it wasn't very recent. Um, we found things like like old uh, TV sets. I found um, like a pile of razor blades, so just just lots of different stuff. And we, I think we loaded like a whole truck with uh, all the rubbish. And this has been going on for years. And I think recently people people just started not even noticing that, but just talking about it more, especially about plastic and you know the problem with that. Okay, so uh, your first picture, do you want to tell me more about? Uh, so yeah, I was, um, my intention was to create like a set of posters that could be like featured around our billboards, so it would be featured around um, the local area. 
Um, and of course, like um, because we're design students, we have to find like an application for our work. So just um, I made these posters like um, um, speculative campaign for Zero Waste Scotland. So that could be just to show how they could be applied. And uh, also, if you if you jump to my portfolio on Behance on my website, you see them there are, um, or if you see in my folder that I sent you, mm -hmm. um, I had um, made up some mock-ups, like uh, how these posters could be used, like on a, on a bus stop or in a billboard or things like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, the taglines are just there to like attract uh, the viewer because, you know, we now, there are so many pictures like around the world we are surrounded by pictures and you know people don't notice them anymore so it has to something has to go with it as well as a photographer you were still able to go out and work and stuff during lockdown even though there was restrictions well i had no choice <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was limited to the like the area i could go to because i don't um i don't drive so I just had to use whatever was around, so it was like the beach and then riverside and, and parks. So you feel that the restrictions had a large impact on your work then? Um, I'm not going to lie to you, Greg, it's been an adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> um, it disrupted my life a little bit, but um, it also, I think, removed a lot of distractions. You know, because like, like you have that um, shelf behind you with uh, heaps of lenses and everything. Sometimes you just, like you have so much to choose from. It's like, um, I don't know, choice paradox or something that you don't know. You can't decide what to do or what to use. And a lot of people say that um, scarcity um, boosts creativity. So if you have like very few tools to work with, then um, your creativity kicks in and then you just, um, you know, try to come up with ideas and um, remove the, the clutter or the, the noise in your head or whatever that's distracting you. These things are everywhere, wherever you go, they're just like the cans, bottles and other rubbish that just, it's just everywhere. Especially you can notice it during a lockdown where there's fewer people on on the streets and then it all just like jumps out at you and um, there's just so much to to photograph i i had lots to edit like really lots of pictures to choose from and which i was not happy about but you know it helped with my project so so that um obviously that we can see a lot of gloves lying about um gloves and masks and things like that. And I thought maybe the, the cure uh, would refer to the, um, you know, like we wear gloves to prevent the, the contamination and everything. So, you know, we are the, the problem, uh, but we also can be the cure. So if we do something about it, so that's that was the, the message behind it. And it also, I think the, the image with the glove, like it kind of, reminds me of like um, like a shot from uh, maybe a horror movie or like a zombie movie or something. Um, when we look at the main wall, when you first walk in, we have your video there with the, with the bag caught in the bush. Do you want mm -hmm. to tell me more about that and your inspiration behind it? Uh, so that's uh, that's the footage I took. Like uh, I can say it's my from my B-roll. I, I wasn't meant to use it, but um, I thought when I, after I put five images in my room, I thought it's it's a little bit static and there's no focal point and all the images are like they have something in common the old posters with like um you know like some text so i decided to just like, throw one of them away and put that video in i edited a bit just to put it on the loop and actually someone um who was viewing that room they told me that it re reminds them of a ghost mm -hmm. which actually i was uh, happy about because you know this like if you believe in ghosts like this this is what's um 
what is left after we all gone. So, you know, after not to be like or doom and gloom, but after we're all gone, all the plastic will be left and, you know, it's like forever. <laughs>